one of the communities on Facebook that I post to and read and what have you for acrylic painting asked, how did I do the shoes? So these are obviously not the ones that I completed. These are the cheapo knockoff uh, converses that I bought off of Amazon to do a proof of concept. Um, so basically they're just like canvas shoes that sort of look like Adidas, the Converse's, whatever, English card, that's, that's, yeah, there's a reason why this is quick, because I probably should sleep. Anyway, so, um, eh, I like this, I just opened the thing, I'm already covered in paint. Um, sorry about all the miscellaneous other paint, that's from the last painting I just did, and just took off of here so I could do this. I'm trying to find the other ones. Excuse me while I sniff, because there's a very obvious odor difference between Marvel stuff that I do and this stuff. Um, so the colorings that I use basically for this one are the colors for um, the, the final product was to be worn with, as the bride's shoes for the, her wedding that's coming up next week. Um, they're just varying shades of cobalt blue and purple and white, uh, just titanium white. I believe this one. Mm, yeah, that smells yummy. Um, it's they're a little soupy right now, but or not soupy. Pardon me. Um, mixed up with about the same consistency as you ever use for doing a pour, kind of like oh man, goosey goosey. Um, these particular ones are a little. Less because they've been sitting a little bit, so they've evaporated a touch. That being said, I was using GAC 900, pardon me, which is their heat setting fabric painting medium. Um, the directions say to mix one part of the GAC to one part of paint. Um, I basically told them, you're not the boss of me, and I would come in and mix it up like I would a normal fluid acrylic. So, um, you know, just keep adding it until it got a little loose. I need to replace this stick. It's like slippery as all get out. But, um, so basically, You want to just have them the same consistency you would normally use for pouring with just the GAC 900 in place of the pouring medium or water or whatever you tend to use. Um, I only use the GAC 900 in this case because I didn't want to have any kind of issues or problems with making sure that uh, it's set correctly and would generally just work out. So. In the process of doing this, in order to get this all set up, as you can see, I just used, uh, in this case, it looks like edge lock, scotch blue painter's tape all along the edge where the rubber is. And I tried to press it down as much as I could. You can see the lining here from the edges of this. This is obviously the unpainted side, the painted side. I shoved um, additional, in, in addition to what they shipped me, craft brown brown craft paper inside to help keep some structure and hold the sides up in the case of the ones that i sent to the bride they were high tops so i kept i shoved paper all the way up um just to make sure that again it had some structure to it so it was easier to work with um yeah so i'll just show you what i did turn on this so Basically, uh, I would just lay it flat when I was working on the side. Um, obviously, with a high top, you've got more surface area to work with. And you want to make sure, and it's a little harder, obviously, to get the back here. But um, you could usually do it with one of the sides. In this case, it looks like I left it to do it with this side. I didn't worry too much about it bleeding through these the, the shoelace holes, uh, aside from making sure that they were clear enough 
at the end, which I did with um, a bamboo skewer or a couple of toothpicks to kind of just go through the grommet, make sure. And so I've got even the grommets here and there painted. I wasn't like going out, setting out to make sure that they were painted. So your mileage may vary, of course. Um, yeah, so I'll show you what I did. Basically, I just kind of treated it like a very weird shaped canvas um, in that I would just start putting little bits of puddles and things around here and there, uh, letting it move as it wanted to, or in, as you can see in this case, it didn't want to. I wanted to try to make sure as much as I could, in this case with the, these colors for her wedding, that I didn't overpower one versus another or what have you. So I tried to kind of make sure it was here and there. And with these colors, because specifically they're both variants of cobalt, I tried to put white in for contrast because if they, and I did a couple of paintings as a, just a demo to show her when I was working on it, um, you put them too close together too much and they kind of blur into this blob of like cobalt <laughs> I guess for lack of a better way of putting it so I tried to always where I could make sure there's some weight for, for contrast to show off the prettiness of the colors Trying to get to the edges here of the tape to make sure I don't have any canvas left showing. The paint itself is pretty, like I said, fluid from adding enough GAC to it, so that works out. And then once I get to about a state where stuff's moving around, what have you, kind of start tilting it like I would a normal a normal painting. All right, I'm going to try and make sure I can do this so you can see it. But I mean, it's the same process you all probably are used to. Um, because these have dried a touch. Um, it's not as fluid as I was hoping for. So let's just add a bunch more here. make things go yeah, surface tension on these is a little more of a crankiness but what are you gonna do right that being said if it continues to be uncooperative which it probably will this was the initial reason why I mixed it up much more fluid than I originally started with, uh, I, you can either use straw, obviously, because it'll work, or uh, if you're like me, and eventually you're just like, I'm tired of being the big bad wolf and huffing and puffing here, uh, you pull out something slightly bigger than that, in my case, an air compressor attached to One of these bad boys as you can see i used it a lot um and i mean with any as you've used one of these before or a straw or what have you it's the same notion straight up and down gives you a different effect than sideways gives you a different effect than you know differing angles so do as you will So the canvas itself is, gonna, is, as you can see, absorbing some of the paint, which is why it's not as fluid as you would expect on like a canvas. Tis what it is, kind of how it goes. Um, so 
having something to bloat around with, be it one of these bad boys or a straw or whatever you have on hand works. Initially, I was doing it with a straw, so no worries. And you get whatever effects that you want out of it. Um, oops, I missed it a little bit here. Whoop, problem solved. And sometimes just the process of breaking the surface tension just by blowing it around a little bit helps move things, as you just saw, or as you might not have seen. Uh, it started flowing more towards the back once I did that. Sometimes when it starts doing something fun like that, I'll just grab it and chuck it a little back here. Um, I specifically was uh, doing one side then the other, uh, letting one side dry completely before doing moving to the next side. My air compressor is just like a little one for the airbrush. Um, I believe I have it set and it's a range of 20 to 25 PSI if that's of any help to anyone it's not very high it doesn't need a lot of oomph really and then just kind of fill in the blanks as you need to here and there um, if you see that you've got something dominating over another one or you know, you're like, hey, this spot needs more of this. Yeah, the usual. Go with the flow. Add, subtract, whatever works for what you're thinking. Go to work. And a lot of the times, you know, as it dries, it does its own little thing. Just stuff shifts a little bit. But this stuff, I mean, because I'm keeping it relatively flat, it usually is pretty stable unless I'm like mucking with it like that. And uh, I am streaming this on Twitch simultaneously, so if somebody's talking to me right now, I apologize. I did not grab my laptop or iPad to sit next to me, so I cannot see anything you're saying right now. I just wanted to do this really quick. Um, it's not often folks ask for explanations from me. I'm usually getting them from them, so... That was a little too hobby. Oh well. I'm washable. Theoretically. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole process in a nutshell. Um, as you can see, I did get it in some of the grommets. So, I mean, you can clean it out early, um, but it's likely that the stuff's going to keep going in as it dries. But also what's fun is it's going in on the tongue. So I did, uh, in my case, paint the tongue of the shoes, which I'll show you in two seconds how I did it on the other shoe while this one dries. But um, yeah. Pretty, pretty quick and dirty. Easy peasies. Drop that here. Now, this is the other shoe. I did both sides on this guy. Um, for the tongue, I tried to pull it out of the shoe as much as I could to get it forward. Um, 
it doesn't really matter what you use, I suppose. This is just, uh, I use this for like leveling my surface here. But I put something behind it to kind of give it a little bit of flatness, but also keep it from, uh, in the case of the high top, it was more of a problem than it is here. It was folding back inside, so I couldn't get to the whole surface. So what I did was I pulled it out as much as I could and then took a piece, I had a piece of cardboard that I had custom cut to just fit like the exact width of the tongue to hold it so it wouldn't keep folding back in and so it could dry basically. Um, but same idea, do the same exact thing really with this. Um, it's going to already have color obviously because as you can see it's leaking through the grommets and just me touching it with the gloves. Um, and also I do highly recommend gloves for this stuff because in big words here and warning, it contains formaldehyde. I should probably have a mask on, but I don't because I don't. So same idea. You take all of your paints that you've mixed with the GAC 900. You just start doing as you will. And again, don't forget the canvas is going to absorb some of it. So you're probably going to end up using more than you think you should. Um, I want to just give it a tap, maybe encourage some movement of the paint. Um, yeah. Add as you see fit. In this case, with these shoes in particular, the white almost tends to look exactly like the color, well, not on these ones exactly, but on the Converse for sure, uh, the same exact color as the canvas itself, which was kind of odd when I was painting it. I'm like, oh god, did I miss a spot? And the answer was no. They just look almost the same. So, um, As they dry, I will say this, um, one concern that I had was they got a little stiff. Uh, and I worried about just the comfort of wearing them for an extended period of time. The final step of doing these is uh, on the back of the GAC bottle itself, where you want to let it dry completely and then heat set. In this case, with the shoes, I put a rack in the dryer and put the shoes on it and then set the dryer to high for 40 minutes and let her rip. So... You could do, I mean, as long as you've got a, a rack that you could put in the dryer, you could do uh, hats, probably, since they would also be stable, um, and other such stuff. Otherwise, um, the demo video on Golden Sight itself showed them doing a t-shirt. Um, the t-shirt, he put a little piece of cardboard underneath it and he so basically between the two layers of the shirt between the front and the back did some painting on the front of it and then um flipped it inside let it dry flipped it inside out and heat set it in the dryer and they said it's washable as long as you turn it inside out so um <laughs> I'm not going to one way or the other attest to the water fastness of this stuff. I was recommending to my friend who I made the shoes for that she might want to waterproof these because legitimately I have no idea how water fast they are or are not. This is why I did the paper so that way I could get it or the cardboard to get along the edges without messing up what I'd already done. Like you do.
Um, yeah, pretty much it. Colors that are really close, obviously, like these guys, you have to almost absolutely use a, a white or something else to kind of give them some contrast so they pop against each other. Um, down here on the very, very bottom was a problem with me on the other set too, where it wasn't necessarily running all the way down um, and even blowing it around wasn't helping a hell of a lot. So. Uh, I guess this was one way to use up the rest of this paint. But the one bottle of this GAC 900 with this high of a dilution was enough for me to finish um, the two the, the pair of high tops. Um, so this was another like smaller bottle that I was just I had done this as a test with. So it's for fluid consistency, it's a lot of GAC 900 as a heads up for your buying, so that way you know how much quantity you need. I found that the tongues were a lot more interesting because of the like just sloped nature of them. You could get a little more interesting effects out of it. But I will say, for me at least, I almost absolutely needed to do something along the lines of an air compressor or a, a straw to just move things around. Um, to make them a little more visually interesting. And I can hear you already in my head. No, stop! What are you doing? You're ruining it! Trust me, that voice is in my head pretty much 24-7. I'm going to have to suck some of it out of here. I used too much. Whoops! Hello, Mr. Pipette. But, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's about what you would expect it to be. Just be careful not to do what I'm doing here with this. I've got it, like, going out the hole here a little bit. I'm bleeding around. There we go. I mean, even if you do do it, it's just going to dry again, so it's not a huge deal. Um, Yeah. And you just let it dry and then do what you need to do. 